Hi, I'm Chris Frame and welcome to my channel. There's no doubt that 2020 has been a difficult year for cruising. In fact, it's been a difficult year for the travel industry as a whole. With the ongoing impact of the coronavirus outbreak, cruising has ground to a halt and the majority of the world's cruise ships are in a state of warm layup. I've already made a video covering this off which you can check out in the info card or the description below. Over recent weeks, we've started to see some ships being retired from their previous roles in cruise lines. Notable examples include the P&O UK ship Oceana, Morella Celebration, as well as Costas Costa Victoria. My friend Emma from Emma Cruises has made a great video explaining what's going on with the ships that are being retired. I've linked it in the description below and you should definitely check that out. So what about all the ships that were under construction when the coronavirus outbreak started? What's happening to them and are they delayed? Well, keep watching to find out. Cruising has become ever popular over the last two decades as a fun, safe and relaxing way to holiday. Many older ships, including those built in the 1980s and 1990s, and in some cases even older ships than that, have been kept in service due to the high demand. While over recent years, cruise lines have been building more and more new ships to start supplementing and improving their fleets. The growth of cruising has led to an evolution of cruise ship design, with new ships bringing extra features to the market in order to attract passengers. Additionally, ships started sailing to many new destinations opening up new markets and appealing to a much wider audience. Until the 2020 cruise pause caused by COVID-19, people of all ages could enjoy a cruise holiday. Over time, passenger expectations have changed. From the first cruise ships of our modern cruising age, which were essentially repurposed ocean liners, you can check out my video in the info card about the difference between ocean liners and cruise ships. Many older ships built in the 1990s and 1980s, and in some cases even earlier, have been kept in active service due to the cruising boom. Even while, over recent years in particular, there have been more and more new builds that offer experiences that cruise lines think travellers will want. So with the unprecedented global shutdown, what's happening with those ships that were under construction? Perhaps the most notable example of a ship that was ready for launch in 2020 but has yet to enter service is Virgin Voyages' 110,000 tonne new build Scarlet Lady. Built at Fincantieri in Italy, the ship was completed in February 2020 and had commenced a series of shakedown cruises where media and cruise vloggers were able to experience a short voyage on board the ship. Scarlet Lady then sailed to Miami in the United States, where the ship was supposed to commence her maiden voyage. However, the cruise line made the prudent decision to suspend her services due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Scarlet Lady has since spent time in warm layup off the coast of Florida, but has recently sailed back to the shipyard in Italy. Her sister ship, Valiant Lady, was recently floated out at Fincantieri, where she remains under construction. P&O's Iona is another highly anticipated ship, with the vessel originally due to enter service in May 2020. However, the cruise pause has delayed Iona's entry into service until October, with her first voyage planned to depart Southampton on 24 October bound for Hamburg. The 184,000 tonne Iona was built at Mayer Werft in Germany. She is currently alongside in Bremerhaven, having recently undertaken sea trials. Celebrity Apex is the second ship in Celebrity's Edge class. Built at the iconic Chantier de l'Atlantique shipyard in France, the 130,000 ton ship was due to enter service in March 2020. However, rather than a physical delivery, Celebrity instead performed a virtual delivery ceremony. Celebrity Apex remains in Saint-Nazaire and is currently scheduled to resume Celebrity's cruising schedule in September of 2020. Other nearly completed ships of note include the Enchanted Princess. A royal class cruise ship, the 144,000 ton vessel is nearing completion at Fincantieri. Originally scheduled to enter service in mid-2020, she has commenced sea trials off the Italian coast and is expected to join the Princess fleet once the cruising pause ends. Saga's new Spirit of Adventure is also nearing completion. The 58,250-ton ship was expected to join her sister, Spirit of Discovery, in October of 2020. However, her maiden voyage has since been postponed till November 2020. This means that Saga currently only has a one-ship fleet, 
with Saga Pearl 2 having left the fleet in 2019, and Saga Sapphire recently departing in July this year to join Annex Tours. Remember to check out Emma's video about the retirements in the description below. One of the most anticipated ships of 2020 is the Carnival Mardi Gras. Of the same class as P&O's Iona, the ship is LNG powered and will carry the name of Carnival's first cruise ship, the 1960s built TSS Mardi Gras, which actually started life as Empress of Canada for Canadian Pacific steamships. The new Mardi Gras will introduce the first roller coaster at sea, as well as bring in a change to Carnival's distinctive livery with a stylized blue bow. But she will retain the highly distinctive winged funnel that made its debut on Carnival's first purpose built cruise ship, the Tropical. Carnival's Mardi Gras has been delayed with the maiden season now pushed back to February 2021. Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas was set to debut in 2020, but now looks set to welcome its first guests in 2021. The Quantum class cruise ship has a tonnage of 169,000 tons, making it the second largest class of cruise ships in the RCI stable. Another significant new build is RCI's huge Wonder of the Seas. The latest ship in Royal Caribbean's Oasis class, the vessel is under construction at Chantier de l'Antique. With an anticipated launch in 2021, the ship is scheduled to offer cruises in China. A highly anticipated new build is the unnamed Cunard ship, initially due to enter service in 2022. With steel cutting now taking place at Fincantieri, the ship has been the topic of much excitement since Cunard announced the order in September 2017. Set to be the 249th Cunard, the vessel is a Pinnacle-class ship of around 113,000 tonnes. In his 4th July Cunard 180th anniversary video, Cunard President Simon Palethorpe quelled fears relating to the new ship's future, confirming that the new ship's construction is ongoing by saying, We are looking forward to the arrival of the fourth ship of the fleet, the 249th in Cunard's history. Given the impact of the current situation, we're reviewing exactly when this will be. I've linked to his full address in the description below. Another pinnacle class ship under construction is the Holland America ship Rhindam. A 99,000 ton design, the ship is currently scheduled to enter service in May 2021. The last ship I wanted to touch on in this video is the Disney Wish, as I get a lot of comments about Disney ships on my videos. At 144,000 tons, the ship is larger than Disney's current ships and retains the ocean liner inspired exterior profile that first made its debut aboard Disney Wonder and Disney Magic. Set to enter service in January 2022, the vessel will be built at Mayer Wharf, the same yard that built both the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy. At the time of recording, there are no known delays to Disney Wish. There are many new builds under construction or in the order books in the years of 2022 onwards to 2025. I've tried to do in this video is cover off on the ships that were under construction at the time of the coronavirus pandemic. I will of course upload further videos if there's any changes to these schedules that are of note. And remember to check out my website at chrisframe.com.au for the latest cruise information. If you're interested in cruising news, check out my cruise news playlist. Or if you're more interested in maritime history, take a look at my maritime history playlist. And when we are able to cruise again, I hope to see you on board.